Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at Silex, a micro PHP framework. Small, featureless, or bare bones. Silex is great for prototyping microsites, highly specialized microservices, and anything that's going to be really self contained and depend on some very specific libraries. To begin with, you need to compose or require Silex. After that's complete, you're going to have to create your own bootstrap file, typically within the index.php. Routing is typically done through a single file. It uses conventions that are shared by other frameworks, like git, put, post, etc. So you would call app git, passing in the path that you want to use or declare. You also have the option to declare a controller and method to handle the request. View handlers allow you to dynamically render responses or inject data directly into your Twig view. There is an interface for file handling and security options to prevent injection attacks. Routing is also coupled with middleware. If you're not familiar with middleware, it's basically a way of forcing a bit of code to be executed at some point during the execution stage of the routing process. So before this set of routes, I want to do the authentication middleware would be a good example. Silex comes with and works out of the box with PHP unit. It has options for both unit and functional testing. Functional testing requires you to bootstrap your application before it'll work properly. Service providers are used to bootstrap components of an application and tie them together. And they're used heavily where you would implement an event observer system or also known as a pub sub system. Services are available to provide dependency injection to your application. The Twig templating engine is used to make view files cleaner and give you options for macros. The asset service provides additional file handling, mostly for front-end assets, CSS, and images. Monolog, a common logging platform, allows for multiple log files, priority, permission application, level annotation, and naming conventions. Silex's session service provider provides custom configuration values and the ability to use multiple handlers, including Redis, Memcached, File, or DB. SwiftMailer is a simple email service. There appears to be no options for a third party service like MailTrap, etc. Locale is used to create dictionaries for multilingual sites. The validator service is used for form validation, typically. The form service provides a clumsy interface for creating forms within your controllers. The CSRF service provides a way to get a token to prevent CSRF attacks. Right out of the box, Silex already supports any reverse proxy like Varnish through the HTTP cache service. The HTTP fragment service provider provides support for Symfony fragment subframework, which allows you to embed fragments of HTML within a template. Silex's security service manages authentication and authorization. It provides interfaces to deal with token storage, authentication checking, password encoders, session management, error management, and user management. You can apply security rules to individual paths or groups of paths. You can encode passwords, check and apply for roles on users, impersonate users, define custom encoders, and set it up so you have stateless authentication. Silex also has a serialized 
It's used for converting standard objects to a format that can be stored typically within your database. Silex service controllers are used to inject dependencies directly into controllers or methods of that controller. Because your dependencies are clearly defined, they're easily mocked, allowing you to test your controllers in isolation. Vardumper is used for debugging. And finally, Doctrine is their chosen ORM. It's used for communicating between models and their database. All right, guys, that wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.